Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, our desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an un inhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? The eye, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give it to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Happy are those who do not follow the way of the wicked. Take the path that sinners dread. Happy are those who do not sit in the seat of the scoffers, but their delight is in the love of the Lord. And on this law. Day and night 
the wicked not so they are like chaff that the wind drives away therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment no sins in the congregation reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is not true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. 
Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when you all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hello beloved, hello my friends. It has been almost two full months in this new year. And we are journey in this feast of Epiphany. We need always to remind ourselves that we are in this season, that we celebrate the revelation of the divine made manifest among humanity in Jesus Christ. And as we celebrating this season of Epiphany, and we are celebrating of the revelation of the divine uh, among us as a Jesus who has lived among us, every Sunday we are going to learn about the identity of this divine. Every Sunday we are going to meditate about this aspect, about this divine Jesus who have became human and dwelled among us. And we, uh, as much as we learn about the identity of Jesus, also we learn about our identity as Christians and followers of Jesus and followers the way of Jesus. So let's now, uh, in this sixth Sunday of Epiphany, know a new aspect about this divine who has been manifest among us in Jesus Christ. In today's reading, we are reminded that there are things beyond what we can understand in this world. The prophet Jeremiah speaks powerfully. He said, Thus said the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strings, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. The prophet is telling us to rely on human strings. The effort of us mere mortals is not only foolish, but horrible. The prophet continue by exalting those who trust in God. Yes, the passage reaches its full climax when condemnation of the human heart. The prophet is saying the human heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? Human intentions, human efforts, human de doings can only lead us so far. Indeed, even the human heart, human compassion, human em empathy is bound by limits at best and vulnerable to se de deception at worst. So faith demands us reach out beyond our what we can feel perceive or even know. Faith demands us reach out to God to open our hearts and minds to the mystery and reality which we live in. Without this great faith, without the opening of our hearts and minds, we cannot grasp the mystery which we live in. And this is the key to our reading in the passage today from the Gospel of St. Luke. And the key verse is in verse 20. We read that Jesus, then he looked up at his disciples and said, Jesus looked up at his disciples who were gathered at that plain place and he said directly to the disciples by looking at them. 
At the root of these well-known words, which we refer to as Beatitudes, is Jesus' view about those who follow him. He looks at them and then relates how Jesus sees them. The Beatitudes are basically a viewpoint, a way of seeing others, a way of seeing life, history, situation. Jesus sees life in his way, the way of Jesus. Jesus comes to that plane, to that place of meeting with his disciples and the multitude of people who have gathered around. Jesus speaks his view and tries to communicate it to his disciples, to the crowd and to us. Jesus tells his disciples and he is telling us that there is another way of looking at reality. Our view is to look and stop at what we see. If our view sees a poor person, it sees only a poor one. If our view sees someone who cries, it sees someone who cries. If it sees riches, it only sees riches. It sees reality from inward looking attitude. Jesus' view instead is capable of seeing within, seeing beyond, seeing things in relation to the Father and to the way the Father has to continue his story with his humanity. Jesus sees the poor as those to whom the kingdom belongs. Jesus sees the hungry as those who will experience God's care. Jesus sees the afflicted as those who will know God's comfort. Jesus sees losers as those who open themselves to true riches, to the greatest reward. And Jesus sees the rich, the pleasure-seeking, the satisfied, as people who cannot open themselves to anything more than what they already have. As persons locked in the present, persons for whom life is everything that they live here and now. And this is what Jesus was saying, whoa, because when we look lock ourselves in the present and what we see only in this life we cannot see beyond our view our look jesus does not explain why it happened so to see beyond our look it's not something that one cannot explain by human logic but it is in the faith in the eye of faith as we continue reading in Luke's Gospel and we reach to chapter 10, Jesus himself tells of this amazement of the mystery of life. At that same we read in Luke uh, chapter 10, At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise, and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants yes father for such was your gracious will the beatitudes then are the meaning of revelation to the little ones so what happens in this revelation it leads to total reversal of perspective and of interpreting reality Whoever experienced the relationship with Jesus, the coming of God into our life, we see therefore reality in a different way, in a reversed way. We cannot but think of the Blessed Mary, the Theotokos, after having been 
through her personal encounter with God in the Annunciation, after experiencing that the Lord really brought life where life could not have been, then Mary with her Magnifica thing, sings, uh, sing of a new world. She sings of a world just as she sees now in relationship to Christ and to his salvation given to the least. Mary said in the Magnifica, His mercy is for those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. This deep look into our situation and to the world is not about stirring oneself to be happy. Rather, it's about letting oneself to be transformed by the look because it is an Easter view, the transformation with this look. It's like what happened in Easter, in our faith in the Easter, that it changes everything as St. Paul teaches us in his first letter to the Corinthians. St. Paul teaches us that for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have died. And this is the view in uh, is missing to look deeper into our world into our face with the same look of jesus that look will help us in walking jesus way in the same way that we look into our faith in the deep of easter of the resurrection beloved christianity will not bring anything in you to the world and is unable to change anything, our world, our community, and ourself will be closed in itself if we don't look beyond what we see in our reality, if we cannot look how God's kingdom is working in this world. But if there is this in you, look, and this is in you way, there is also another way of thinking, living, acting, a way capable of changing the situation because it is a progressive, clear look, clear vision that will lead to change one heart, mind, soul, and the world. So let's now always continue our, uh, our way in this epiphany season and in this identity of a new look that will change everything. Let us pray together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and, and the world. For peace between all nations and people, for those serving in harm's way. Especially for... We offer our prayers. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For, For the, the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For, For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our preceding bishop. For Bonnie, our bishop, and for our clergy, we offer our prayers. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray in thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, for all ministers, lay and ordained. We offer our prayers. For all who serve God and church, We pray for all who have died, especially and we pray for these from our family and friends. We pray that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them. Who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially, and now I invite you to refer to the parish bulletin for the names of the people in the parish that we are praying for, and to also add those from your family and friends. We pray for those for whom healing has begun. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of tur turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace there may come a creative compassion, a third for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to become incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when He had given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, 
and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. For those of us sharing in the Agape meal, may this sacred meal remind us of the love of God in Christ and in this community as the body of Christ. For those who are gathered for spiritual communion, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gift of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ's bright star enlighten your mind and heart as you strive for equality, justice, and kindness in the world. For life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life, be with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.